So I bet you've been asking yourselves, how do I paint a corn blood letter? I'm going to tell you. That's today's video. Let's get started. We're going to start deep. I'm going to get out some of my Vallejo model color violet and some Reaper Nightshade Purple. I'm going to mix these in my airbrush about 50-50 to start here and we're going to get a nice deep rich undertone here. You can see this violet is quite a bit darker than it normally would be with a little bit of that Reaper Nightshade Purple in there. That's exactly what I'm looking for. We're creating shade with a little bit of saturation in it. This is how we're getting started. This is a great way to start on any sort of red fleshed model. We're going to take this traditional with a red fleshed blood letter. Now, we're going to move on to burnt red, and we're going to do a top down kind of almost zenithal type kind of shading here with the red. We really want to catch where the light is hitting. Now, keep in mind this process is somewhat intended for a tabletop level quality, and it can be batch painted. So, a lot of this is airbrush tech and things you can do just kind of in big steps, big swaths, big batches. And this can apply to more than just blood letters. Any kind of cornate demon or even some sort of uh, like D&D type figure might enjoy a red skin tone or a, uh, or a very fiery classical demon look. You know, whatever, uh, whatever piques your fancy, right? All right, once you've got a nice solid red tone in, let's get our bold pearl red from Monument Hobbies. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna hit this a little bit more spot on the uh, like different bits of the musculature, the elbows, shoulders, etc. Anything that's kind of exposed to the light, especially on the back here. We'll skip ahead just a little bit. We're kind of building that slowly, and you can see how much more poppy this is. Now, if you've watched my flesh hound video, you'll notice that this is a much more red tone. The uh, Flesh Hound was a much darker, kind of ruddy brown, ruddy red, and black. We're actually going to go for something a little bit more poppy here. And in, to do so, we're going to break out some of our olive flesh. We're going to mix that in with a little bit of the Bold Pearl Red that we had in our airbrush. And we're going to kind of hit some of those high points once more. And you notice this kind of desaturates it a little bit. Olive Flesh is a great way, or even any other kind of tan or peach kind of tone, is a great way to highlight red. And in this case, we're actually kind of desaturating it a bit. But uh, just give it a second, and I'll show you what I'm about to do with that. We're going to get our bold pearl red out. That's what we're going to do. We're going to tone back over that just a little bit. So now that we've desaturated it, and we're resaturating it, that, uh, that area where it was just a little bit more desaturated looks a little bit more poppy now. So we've got a nice, really bright, rich red with some deep, kind of saturated shadows. I'm going to break out some of my golden yellow, mix that with the Bold Pearl Red just a smidge, and we're going to lightly airbrush this. So you'll notice I'm doing what's called a crossfade on the Blood Letter Sword, and I'm using the topography of the sword because it's kind of split down the middle to airbrush this. This is something you want to practice, so you can kind of blow over edges, etc., and you can get some really neat effects, kind of getting crisp corners and lines and stuff like that over edges. This is what I like to call shooting the tangent. Thank you out to Iron Headed for that turn of phrase. And we're going to keep doing this on each side, and we're going to build up that yellow just a little bit as we go. Now, once we've done that, we're going to get out some of our Vallejo model color black, and with that black, we're going to we're going to go ahead and hit the shaded parts once more, kind of really reinforce that, clean up any of the overspray that we might have. And if you really need to, hit some of the shadows with just a little bit of black if you think it's a little bit too bright. No reason to waste any of that black paint. We'll go ahead and hit the black horns here. You'll want to hit the smaller ones probably with a hand brush but we can get those big ones with the airbrush and kind of fade them in a little bit speaking of fading in we'll get a little bit of that violet out here and hit the tongue and we'll do a, uh, a violet fade here 
just a little bit of black in the middle as a transition between the violet and the red. This gives us just a little bit of a kind of interest point on the model because it's mostly red and yellow. I'm going to use various bits of that burnt red, bold pearl red, and golden yellow out that I had before to get some edge highlights here and kind of do them a little bit directionally. Some of the darker areas hit with a little bit of the red first and then build up to that yellow and push the yellow towards where you think the light should be hitting. Also, we're going to get out our Caspian blue and Arctic blue. So you're probably wondering what I'm doing with those black areas, the fin along the back, the horns, etc. We're going to highlight those out with a little bit of Caspian blue and Arctic blue. So you can see I've added that Caspian blue to a few different areas where light's hitting. It looks kind of like a very dark kind of light shine and we'll keep building that up and then we'll also add that to the claws on both the hands and the feet and then add in a little bit of arctic blue as you can see here to hit the very tips and kind of blend that down as we go just to kind of smooth out that transition on the shine line we'll hit those on the very edges kind of tips and very exposed tops and that includes the uh, the teeth here as well. well we'll go ahead and use arctic blue on the teeth it matches the tone and it doesn't look too comical, all told. A little bit of that bold pearl red, a little bit of our golden yellow, we'll mix that together. We'll hit some of the little kind of like warts, nodules, I'm not sure exactly what these are all over the bullet letters, but we'll, we'll hit a little bit of paint here and there, kind of bring those out just a little bit more We're on along the top edges of the musculature. Gonna go real basic. We're gonna use some snake bite leather on the wrap of the handle, and after that's dried, we'll hit a little bit of olive flesh on top to just highlight that. Additionally, we're gonna get out some of our Regency gold. We'll base coat in the cross guard and the pommel of the sword, and then we'll hit it with some Agrax Earthshade to kind of knock it down a little bit. On top of that, we'll want to highlight the gold just a little bit. We'll get out some of our antique gold, also from Dark Star, just to hit a few of the kind of tips and edges here as we see fit. Now I'm kind of painting off camera a little bit, but it's a great time to talk about how much I enjoy this. I really do like painting corn demons, I don't know why, they seem pretty basic, they seem pretty just kind of normal demons, but uh, I, I think they, they kind of embody an aspect of fear and terror that's pretty fun. So just painting, some, painting something a little bit classical, a little bit kind of in the norm can be interesting. You can always take these wildly different from what I've done here in the traditional scheme. You know, all sorts of different colors, all sorts of different things, but that kind of just unyielding, non-negotiable kind of hunter is just, uh, it's just a, it's a really cool aesthetic I like. So hopefully you enjoy it as well. There's some really cool Cornate models out there, really cool demons from Creature Caster as well, and some really interesting stuff from producers like Reaper and Dark Sword. Make some really cool NPCs. Well, 
Well, I went ahead and made a base for it. So let's go ahead and throw it on the base. Here we go. We've got a nice tabletop quality blood letter ready to go. This scheme, these techniques are ideal for batching. You can break them down into individual steps. And I hope you enjoyed the video this week. Uh, it's been very uh, difficult making videos the past couple of weeks with life going on. But I appreciate you hanging out with me. And until next time, enjoy painting. Have a great week.